How's it going everyone? Adam here from Coding Basics. And now before I get started, just to talk about a few things. Um, I've pretty much covered a lot of the major stuff I feel like you should know about Python. So the next few tutorials aren't really in any particular order, it's just as I think of stuff that I want to show you guys or teach you guys. So a lot of these tutorials aren't going to build on the previous one like past tutorials have, but um... There's still good stuff to learn, so keep watching. Um, I'm not sure how many more tutorials I got in me for this series, but once I finished it, I'm going to probably move on to Pygame or something, so showing you guys how to program in Pygame. Um, and also what I've been working on right now, and hopefully we'll finish today, is my Leap Motion with Python series. So if you don't know what a Leap Motion is, go check out that series. It's a motion sensor, and I just have a series going on now where I show you how you can program this motion sensor with Python. So all, a lot of good stuff going on, um, but let's get started with today's tutorial. Today's tutorial, tutorial number 24, I believe, is um, string formatting. Now, if we go back to tutorial number, I think it was like 4 or 5 maybe, we were talking about strings and printf. Well, printf is a form of string formatting, which is what we're going over today. So I'm going to go over a couple of different string formatting, a uh, couple of different ways to string format, I should say. And yeah, let's just get started. So once again, we're not going to be coding in Notepad. We're just going to run all this from Cap PowerShell. So let's launch Python and get started. So what I showed you last time was, um, I'll actually comment this. So uh, last time I showed you percent string formatting or it's called modulus I guess modulus string formatting so what that is is you have some string so we're gonna create a random string here and uh, you can um, put in different uh, variables or data into that string using the modulus operators so for example percent s was for a string percent uh, d I believe yeah percent d is for an integer percent uh, f is for floats but with a float the first number will signify how many numbers you want before the decimal place and then you can put a period and another number and that'll say how many um, numbers follow the decimal. So in this case, regardless of the number, it's going to have at least one number in front of the decimal and it's going to round to three decimal places. Now, so yeah, let's just do that. And to insert all the data into these uh, at these positions, we put a percent sign and then in brackets include all the stuff that has to be going in there. So uh, since the first word in the string is hello, we'll make the string that goes in world and then separate each uh, each data or variable by a comma. And uh, so for the integer, let's just put in a 5. And then for the float, I'm just going to put in 3.0. So there we go. You'll see that there was at least one number in front of the decimal place, but three decimal places after. So even though it was just a 0, you'll always have three decimal places. Here's our integer and here's our string. Now one thing I will show you is if we change this, so if I took the 3.0 out of here and put it at the front, we're going to an error here because it's trying to um, make the world into um, this integer. So the one thing I'd like to point out too is the 3.0 didn't cause an error because a number can be converted to a string. So, if we just had uh, that and got rid of all the stuff following, this is going to work because it can convert it to a string. A number can be converted to a string. The problem arised here when we try to convert a string world to this integer. So that was our problem. And, just to show you as well, if we did the float thing, 1.5 say, and we put an integer in, that also, um, oops, sorry, 
I forgot the F. All right, now we're good. So that also works because of integer can be converted to a float. So we don't have problems converting numbers to strings or the different types of numbers to each other. So for example, again, if we put a D here, 3.0, that works fine. Oops, my bad. There's an F there. All right. So everything's fine there. Now, um, another thing to mention too is that the order has to be the right. So it's not going to look for a float. It's going to try to place this in the first modulus operator it finds, which in this case is the string. So make sure everything's in the proper order. But the one disadvantage with this uh, modulus uh, string formatting, um, also known as printf, is that you have to specify what type of data is going in there. So you have to know that that's going to be a string, you have to know that's going to be an integer, you have to know this is going to be a float. So there is a little bit of a disadvantage. Um, so I'm going to show you guys another one. We sort of touched on that in the strings video. We're going to go on a new type of string formatting now. And this one is the curly brace string formatting. So, curly brace string formatting, once again, you place um, these curly braces where you want, you know, some type of variable or data to be displayed in the string. Um, so, both of them, you place the uh, operator where you want this, the uh, data to be inserted, so it's kind of like a placeholder. That's where both of them are the same. Where they're different is, I'll do a string here just to uh, show you. Um, so one way it's different is to uh, insert the data, you have to use the dot format method. And then in here, include what you want said. So there you go. Works fine. And um, yeah, so this just holds a place for the uh, data that's going to be inserted. Now, one thing to mention is you obviously don't have to specify type. We don't have to say if it's a string. We don't have to say if it's a number. You can put any type of data in there you want. So, um, you know, a lot of times if we did like the raw input. So, let's just say num equals raw underscore input. Uh, insert a number. So if we put in four, when you reference num, it comes out as a string. So, you know, even though it's a number up here, if we had a decimal, that would cause an error. Well, that wouldn't cause an error here. So if we did, if we passed a num here, it still works out fine. But if we were using the modulus uh, string formatting, we would have to make sure we specified that as a string, even though there's a number inside that string. So, yeah, a lot of stuff to keep in mind there. Two different types of formatting, and uh, just like the other one, um, we can put in multiple of these. So, we can put in whatever you want. So, how about the word the? I don't know. And then a number, so 3.75, sure. So you can see how this way I prefer. It's a lot better, in my opinion, because you still have um, the curly braces to you know specify where you want it to be inserted, where you want this variable to be located, but you don't have to specify type. So even if, just say it's a user input type program, you don't have to worry about the... Uh, user may be importing a string instead of a number. So that is all I got for you guys this time. Um, I hope you see it my way, that this way is better. But I guess, you know, personal opinion, maybe you like the other way better and you can use it. Both of them work fine. Um, but like I said, that's all I got for you guys this time. Remember to leave a comment on this video, like this video, and subscribe, and I will see you next time.